And we're live. Amazing. Welcome, everybody. We've got Chris Rawlings here. Chris is the founder and CEO of Sophie Society, which is an Amazon optimization company. And those guys work with some crazy eight and nine figure Amazon brands. Chris is also a, a founder of multiple seven figure brands himself as well. So he's doing what he preaches. Uh, he's also a founder of uh, the first European Amazon launch platform uh, called Judo Launch, as well as a co-founder of uh, 22X, which is one of the first securitized crypto currency tokens launched. So Chris also works with some top 1% sellers from ASM.com, which is a, a great Amazon mastermind. So there's a lot of credentials here. Welcome, Chris. Super cool to have you here. What's up, man? Yeah, it's great to be here. It's awesome. Perfect. So we're going to be talking about a topic that's probably very unusual for the listeners of this uh, of this podcast, because we have here mostly Shopify sellers. And now we're talking about Amazon expansion. Why the hell would we talk about that? It sometimes feels like those two worlds are, you know, are not interacting, right? So, yeah, so true. Yep. Two, so two totally we, different games. Exactly. Two totally different games. But I feel that both games could benefit from from knowing a little bit about the other, especially yes. now in terms of what's happening on the Shopify environment and Facebook ads and iOS changes, Amazon sounds like a like a place where you know you can count for a little bit more stability without the reliance on Facebook ads for for your business. Although it's as you mentioned, it's a completely different game. So um, before we dive into the Amazon strategies, but we're going to talk today about why uh, why Shopify sellers could be expanding onto Amazon as a viable scaling strategy and how to actually make this happen. But before we do that, uh, Chris, how about you tell us a little bit of your fascinating story about how you ended up on the Amazon market and all the different companies that you founded? Yeah, I mean, I actually started completely outside this world. I was in the, the science sphere. I actually got a degree in physics, engineering physics. And I straight out of school, I actually started doing some engineering. And it was basically realizing that to control my own destiny, I had to learn business. And that's, that's what brought me into this sphere. So I started on the scientist engineer side before moving into the business side. But as soon as I hit the real world, I realized I needed to know business in order to control my own path, to control my own destiny, to greatest impact the world in the way that I want to impact it and to like play my part in nature and reality and the universe because that's it's just if you if you don't know the mechanics of how to make things happen in human organizations and society then you have to just be a piece of somebody else's machine and uh, I needed to understand that so that I could be in the game at least be in the arena whether I won or not I wanted to be in the fucking arena. So I started business just without any knowledge at all or training. And in the solar company I was working for, I actually got an opportunity to, to start an offshoot of the company. That was a technology that they had patented that they were using for their own projects, but never sold to other companies. So I took it upon myself, you know, as a young kid to just start it without any knowledge, have my girlfriend make the logo. You know, I started doing businessy things, wearing a tie and and uh, printing business cards, going out to conferences, handing out my card, trying to pitch people that I found and um, doing a lot of things the wrong way. But what I had was grit. And I would say for everyone out there, some of you already have learned this lesson. Some of you have yet to learn it. The number one thing that you need to have to succeed as as an entrepreneur, if you're if you're owning a business, isn't intelligence, isn't a degree isn't connections, isn't any of this stuff, isn't money, it's grit, it's relentlessness, it's just never giving up. That's if you have that, you don't need anything else. Like if you just keep on going every single time you get hit, you just you get back up. And that's what I had. I had that because I was so motivated. I had such a fire inside me. I was fine with just embarrassing myself over and over again, looking like a fool, looking like an idiot. And that's what I did for a couple of years. And I actually grew that to a seven figure business. This was a way different type of business, big contracts, 30, 50, 100, 500, $700,000 contracts at a time. So we're not talking tons of little transactions like we are in our world now in e-commerce, but I had no ownership in that company. I'd started it for the parent company. So once I cut my teeth in business, 
I decided to go out and start my own thing. And that was my first e-commerce brand. I sold spinal health products because I actually have a herniated disc from being in a touring rock band for seven years. I was, you know, started selling spinal health products to other people that had spinal injuries like me. And it was actually a really big market turns out. And it took me 18 months to grow that to a seven figure business and expanded it to five different countries, six different countries, selling well in all of those countries. And the great thing about Amazon is that it's really easy to port to different countries because it's the same game. It's like the exact same formula. And it's like international expansion is one of the top ways that you can grow a brand. And so I did that. And that's when I started the launch platform, Judo Launch, which was the first and biggest after other players came in, European launch platform that allowed companies to launch their products in Europe on Amazon. So we would get them their initial sales, their initial ranking, their initial sales velocity, and, and sometimes their initial reviews, although Amazon's policies around that are got more and more strict as time went on. And that's what led me ultimately to Sophie Society. And now I'm, that's my main focus to Sophie Society. I took my background in science, I applied it to Amazon optimization. And so we basically do like results focused, data focused conversion copy for Amazon listings. So the Amazon photos, the images that are on the listing, the video that's on the listing, the keyword research and the copy that's on the listing. It's like really huge in Amazon SEO, just like Google has SEO, Amazon has SEO. Um, so we do that SEO for Amazon listings and all the graphics that are on the listings. There's a big portion where you do custom graphics. We do all that too. But the difference between us and like a creative agency is we do it from a data perspective. We test hundreds and hundreds of different styles of copy for different categories until we find what has the biggest impact on the conversion rate. That's all we care about. Does it change the conversion rate? Meaning for every hundred visitors that come to the listing, will we get 50 buyers instead of 30 buyers? And those numbers might sound crazy to somebody in the Shopify world. In Shopify, you're talking about three, four, 5% conversion. In Amazon, your convert, your, a good conversion rate is like 25, 30, 35%. A bad con and they can go up to 50, 60, 70 percent conversion rate, if you can believe it. Of every hundred customers coming to your page, 50, 60 are buying. It's ridiculous conversions unseen, on Amazon. Unseen on Shopify. <laughs> yeah, you never see that on Shopify. It's just a different game because it's a different type of traffic. You know, people come to Amazon with their wallets like in their hands because they're looking to buy something, they're not browsing around. But yeah, it's 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 an amazing conversion rate. But yeah, so we do all the content that's focused on conversion and then we do the traffic side, but only for Amazon. So just like you guys drive traffic to Shopify sites through Facebook and Google advertising and funnels and things of that nature, we drive traffic to Amazon listings through Amazon advertising. Amazon has its own advertising ecosystem, just like Facebook, just like Google. Amazon is actually the third biggest advertiser on the web. There's Facebook and Google have the biggest chunks. Amazon has the third biggest chunk and the, its share of advertising is growing and growing and growing uh, with every year. I think now it's about 11% of all advertising on the web, period. It's crazy. We manage all the traffic to those high converting listings for sellers from Amazon advertising. And we manage the Amazon PPC. There's video ads, there's brand ads, there's product ads, and you'll see them all around Amazon when you search. And that's me now. I'm focused completely on that. And... Uh, I've known Matt's partner, Mike, for a really long time. We worked together a couple of years ago, have a huge amount of respect for these guys. I think Mike was, was considered lead for sales at the time before you guys you know, merged and, and uh, became one and just saw the results myself because I actually hired Mike to help us with our off Amazon sales and it worked amazingly well. And that's what brought me here. Awesome, epic, yeah, and thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> starting yeah. up, but but let's uh, dive into let's dive into the actual Amazon strategies. Your story is amazing, and I I think you're the best person to tell us more about the Amazon ecosystem and how Shopify sellers could benefit from the Amazon expansion. So diving into that, is it actually a good idea to expand from Shopify to Amazon? Because you know sellers have Shopify sellers have loads of uh, objections when it comes to that. Even when you know asking our clients in the preparation for this podcast uh, I was I was getting all sorts of concerns about this approach so uh, what are the benefits and risks associated with expanding existing brand onto Amazon yeah I mean I won't lie and say it's for everyone it's certainly not for everybody these are two very different worlds but I will say 
that there's a lot more overlap than people think. There's a lot more Amazon businesses that could be successful on Shopify. And there's a lot more Shopify businesses that could be successful on Amazon. When I say Shopify, that's like Kleenex versus tissue. Like it could be WooCommerce, whatever, as, as you know, just off Amazon e-commerce in general that could be successful on Amazon. The main difference is most people come to Amazon to solve a problem, a very specific problem. So it's a lot of high volume commodity goods. My vitamin D supplement in the morning, the pads I wipe my butt with, my coffee mug, an extra set of Bluetooth headphones, you know, stuff like that, where you're like, oh, I need something for my life to live. Toothpaste, dish soap, organic, you know, surface cleaner for my counter. It's all stuff that someone needs to just solve a simple problem. And that's what they come to Amazon for. Not really to discover and find cool new things. You know, some people do browse around Amazon to like find cool stuff, but mostly it's a search driven platform, not a browse driven platform. So people come on and they, they use keywords to search for what they need at that moment. And they're not really browsing around, having fun on the platform, you know, checking stuff. Again, some people do that, but a, a majority, I'd say even a vast majority of purchases are, are search driven. So that defines the types of products that can succeed on Amazon. You know, there are products that fit like a very specific need um, or passion, a need or want. You know, there should be a pain or a passion associated with the product. And this is general, just product advertising. Everything should go towards pain or passion. But the difference is with Shopify and with off Amazon e-commerce, a lot of the traffic comes from people who aren't necessarily looking for that solution they just fit the profile of the consumer, which is why the conversion rates are so different between the platforms, because they might not be looking for, you know, your cool wooden frame sunglasses. They're actually looking at pictures of their friends on Facebook, or they're searching Google for how to make your own wooden frame sunglasses or whatever. And then you interrupt them from that with an ad, trying to convince them to go check out your stuff. So Shopify and off Amazon products that do well tend to be like very unique, very sexy, usually higher price point. Sometimes like they have some kind of X factor. It's, it's really common for like Kickstarter and any crowdfunding products to go right over to Shopify. It's an easy port. Whereas, you know, some of those, some subset of those products that a lot of people are searching for could be good on Amazon. but on Amazon, price is very important, whereas I think it's less important on Shopify because you can charge higher prices if you're if you're targeting the right people. So Amazon shoppers are are somewhat price sensitive. Doesn't mean you have to be the cheapest. You definitely don't. But you're likely not going to rank for your high volume keywords if your price is way out into another universe. You know, if it's twenty percent more, thirty percent more, that's fine. But if it's five hundred percent more than the average of the page one sellers then you probably won't rank. I would say check out the search volume. There are tools like Helium 10 is one. Helium 10 is a great tool, helium10.com that allows you to see the search volume on Amazon for any keyword. And it gives you other related keywords that might be more relevant. So I'll give you an example, vitamin D. If I was to search for vitamin D on Amazon, that's a super high volume search term. That search term might get 200,000 searches a month on Amazon, which is really high. And I'm just guessing that. I don't know what it is, but it's probably around there, I would guess. But if you search fair trade vitamin D, 100 IU capsules, now that search term might only have 10,000 searches a month or 5,000 searches a month, which is still plenty to make a successful business off of. And, and you can try to rank for that, that search term instead and not even try to compete with all the people who are trying to rank for vitamin D because you're more specialized. So that's the game when it comes to Amazon. It's finding out what search terms you need to rank for. And then can you rank for them with your product, your price point, you know, your offering and all of that compared to the other products that are ranking page one on that search term. And then if so, then yes, it's a good idea for you to launch on Amazon. You should. And there are tons of buyers who would be waiting to buy your product once you rank. And we can get in later in this conversation into like how to rank and how to succeed once you launch. Yeah, epic. So it sounds like in order to see if my product is going to do well, the first step is I should look up the search volume on Amazon. Mm -hmm. 
and look up the page one sellers, you know, you likely know what your main search term is. We call that your main search term. Usually there's anywhere between one and four main search terms. And then there's long tail search terms. Long tail, there could be anywhere between 100 and 500 long tail search terms. Usually there's around 40 that are like the most important ones. Long tail is because if you graph the amount of search, the amount of volume that the search terms get, and you order it in the order of like highest search volume to lowest search volume, it looks like this. And then there's a long tail at the end. So it's like the, the top search term gets like the most traffic and then it goes way down to the next search term and then way down. And then it just like kind of like evens out. So we call that the long tail. Those are the search terms that you want to search for, especially if you have a very specific niche category. Got it. Got it. So, yeah. So you mentioned that, you know, I can't probably go to premium in, when it comes to the Amazon stra strategy. What if I already am a premium brand and, but I still want to get some volume on Amazon. Would the good idea, would it be a good idea to spin off, let's say a cheaper version of your product under a different brand and try to launch it in a correct price segment? Yeah. Yep. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. So one is the easiest route that you need to check the low hanging fruit is is there a market for premium versions of the products that you already sell on Amazon? And you do that by searching Amazon for luxury phone holder or premium fold hold, phone holder, whatever, whatever it is you and use these search keyword tools like Helium 10 to give you some suggestions because you'll see some suggestions for like extra thick or things where like the more specific the search term is, the more the buyer is likely to pay because they need something very specific to match their needs. They're not just looking for a generic phone holder. They're looking for one for taking high quality photos from their phone. So it might be like professional photography phone holder or something like that. See the search volume and see the other sellers selling on those more premium, more specific, more niche search terms. And then if you see other sellers at a price point that makes sense to you, and you think your product is as good or better than theirs, and there's a significant amount of search volume for those search searches, then you're good with the product that you already have. Otherwise, if that's not the case, and you're priced way out, even compared with the premium guys, then you can come out with, like you said, either a different brand or the same brand, another version of the product that will be able to be price competitive and still speak to those niches. Yeah, perfect. Because, uh, but let's say, let's assume, okay, I fit into the price range for my particular market where I could be selling on Amazon. I'm a need based product. There's a search volume for my product. How do I then, uh, another question that we've been getting regarding expansion to Amazon is how do I balance the pricing and shipping strategy? Because if you set the price at the same level, then some people might spill off onto Amazon because of, let's say, the, the benefits of Prime and the faster shipping and the more uh, guaranteed, which might seem like, you know, people are escaping from your store to Amazon. How do mm -hmm. you balance the pricing strategy between the two? That does happen and that's tough. So one thing that you have to be aware of is that in order to sell on Amazon, it's actually in Amazon's terms of service that you cannot offer the product cheaper anywhere else on the internet than you do on Amazon. So if you put the product on Amazon for $20, you're not allowed to sell it on your store for less than $20. That's against Amazon's terms of service. And if they find out, they can take down your product. Now, I will say I've never seen Amazon actually enforce this. So you could do that, but you'd be, you'd be running the risk of uh, enforcement from Amazon. In terms of the other way around, you know, if you have a product on Shopify and you have a higher price point because of you paying for traffic and all of that stuff, and you put it on Amazon, for a lower price point, you're right, there is a risk that sellers will search Amazon for the product and find it on Amazon cheaper and then buy it for prime shipping and for uh, ease of payment as well. So they don't have to put their payment information in. That's a, that's a big blocker. However, I don't think that that is a large portion of buyers. And so we talk about this in our, our mastermind sometimes in that, you know, I run a mastermind, as you know, for Amazon sellers called Titan Network. For most of the sellers who are on Shopify, they don't notice an uptick in their Amazon product sales when they launch that product on Shopify, even when they're driving traffic to it, which tells me that it's not a large portion of buyers who come to Shopify and then go to Amazon to buy the same product. I think once they're in your funnel, they kind of get like tunnel vision and they're either going to buy it or not. 
Got it. Okay, so this is actually not necessarily a valid concern. That's good to hear. Yeah. Now, let's talk a bit more about what do I expect when migrating onto Amazon. So there's there's fees associated, there's all sorts of, you know, fulfillment by Amazon area related to it. So what are the sort of fees that I should be expecting when selling through Amazon? They're high, dude. Amazon really takes you to the cleaners. So if you're talking all fees, there's when you ship your products. So first of all, the way to succeed on Amazon is to get Amazon Prime. And the way to do that is to use FBA, which stands for fulfilled by Amazon. That means you use Amazon's own fulfillment network to fulfill your each order. So each time a product, each time a buyer purchases your product on Amazon, it's already in Amazon's warehouses and they ship it out and they get it within two days. You don't have to use Amazon's fulfillment to sell on Amazon. You can use your own fulfillment center. And some fulfillment centers actually can get a version of Prime called Seller Fulfilled Prime. But if you look at any main search term, vast majority of the page one sellers are going to be FBA sellers, meaning fulfilled by Amazon in Amazon's warehouses. So you can kind of assume you're going to need to ship in your inventory to Amazon and have them ship it for you. It's not going to be that big of a price difference anyway, because you know it's it's similar in fulfillment costs. But Amazon takes one chunk fee when you send your inventory into Amazon, which is their inventory check-in fee. Then every time there's a purchase, they take a commission and then they take a pick and pack fee for taking the product out and packaging it. If it's oversized, they'll take an overstock fee. Then if your inventory is in Amazon without being sold for more than 90 days, they'll take a long-term storage fee. And then that long-term storage fee goes up by two times or four times during December, during the holiday season. So they'll take you for everything you got if you're not very, very careful. What it ends up turning out to be is off the retail price that you sell your product for on Amazon, Amazon will get between 30% and 40% of that just for fees. So if I'm selling my product for 20 bucks on Amazon, Amazon will take anywhere between six bucks and eight bucks from that just for selling it. Now, that doesn't take into consideration Amazon advertising, Amazon PPC. And if you're going to sell on Amazon, it's not optional. You have to advertise on Amazon. It's, it's the only way to successfully integrate a successful launch campaign on Amazon where you are ranking, you get visibility on your long tail keywords and your main tail keywords, you get the attention of consumers before you start ranking well, you have to do Amazon PPC. Most sellers do about anywhere between 30% and 50% of their sales come from Amazon PPC. It's a huge chunk. And the rest of the sales are organic, meaning they organically ranked for a keyword and somebody searched a product on Amazon and found them and bought it. So it's a big portion of sales come from Amazon PPC. It's pretty crazy. That's going to add more dollars to your, I mean, it can add another average across all units. It could add another $2 per unit to $5 per unit for your Amazon advertising costs because you need to advertise. So yeah, all in all, you can count on including Amazon advertising about 50% of the retail price, 40 to 50%, including advertising of the retail price is going to go to Amazon and you get the mm, rest. So it sounds like I'd better have good margins on my products. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it's really a and it's really a volume game, right? It's a volume um, game. It is. I'd say so on Shopify about... the margins are higher. Amazon the margins are going to be lower. A typical Amazon business that's healthy and doing well has a net margin after all costs, all employees, you know, inventory costs, cost of goods sold, Amazon's fees, advertising, everything a net margin at the end of the day of 20% is considered healthy. If the business has a 20% net margin, that's considered good by the market, by buyers of, of Amazon businesses. Got it, got it. So let's talk, uh, let's dive into the actual strategies. So what are the major success factors on, on Amazon? What are the main things that you got to nail before you start selling on Amazon? Yeah, okay. So here we come down to how to launch a product on Amazon. And this is crazy because it's funny. Every question you're asking me, I'll, I'll teach like an entire masterclass on that. So we're compressing a lot of data into a, a really short podcast. So this is actually really cool for your listeners. They're getting a ton of value and a ton of, uh, a ton of content all at once. This is something I actually have taught multiple masterclasses on. 
and I'm going to give it to you guys in the next like five minutes. So this is how you successfully launch a product on Amazon. And this is coming from a guy who runs the top tier of the top Amazon mastermind in the industry, which is Titan, Titan Network. I work with only seven, eight and nine figure sellers. This is how you do it today. Now, um, as of May, 2021. There are a couple components to a successful launch on Amazon. First, you have a 35-day window when you first make the product live on Amazon. You shift your inventory in and it goes live. Amazon checks it into its fulfillment centers. The product is live on Amazon. You created a high converting listing. You have a 35-day period called the honeymoon period. This is where Amazon's algorithm, it's called the A9 algorithm, is assessing if your product is good, if customers like it, and if it should be ranked for keywords, and if so, which keywords to rank it for. So during this period, it's a very intense period where every single day, you need to be very aware of all of the product's metrics, the number of reviews it got, the number of organic sales it got, the number of paid sales that it got through Amazon PPC, the number of rebate sales that it got, and I'll explain what that is, and any seller feedback that you get, and the price point of the product every single day. And you want to track that every day. Here's what you do. The goal is to rank for keywords. So what you want to do in this 35-day period to set you up for success with this product launch and keep this product as a cash cow for you on Amazon for months and years to come is you want to determine what keywords you need to rank for and then execute a campaign to rank for them. So let's talk about the first element first. How do I determine which keywords I want to rank for? Again, you want to use this tool, Helium 10, that I mentioned. It's the best tool in the industry right now. That will tell you, if you type in the main search term that you have, like let's go back to the wooden frame glasses. So I could either type in sunglasses or wooden sunglasses. And then it'll come up with not only the search volume for that keyword, but also hundreds and hundreds of other related keywords and their search volume as well. So you want to find the most relevant while having the most traffic keyword possible. So if I'm selling fair trade, wooden frame sunglasses, I don't want to try to rank for the search term sunglasses, I'm going to be competing with all the Chinese sellers that sell super cheap, you know, sunglasses, and they sell 18 different varieties. I don't want to compete with those guys, I'm not even going to try to rank for that keyword. I'm going to rank for wooden frame fair trade sunglasses, fair trade sunglasses, wooden frame sunglasses, I might like find out some influencer who wears the same sunglasses and see if maybe that influencer's name and the sunglasses might be a search term that people are searching. I'll look through all the search terms and find the ones that are most relevant to me. Whereas if people are searching for that and they see my product, they're likely to buy it because this is exactly what they're searching for. And then I'll take five of those keywords, those that, that have the most traffic and are the most relevant. That's the, the game. A lot, a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic but the most relevance that you possibly can have. And then I create a ranking campaign for each of those. And here's how you execute a ranking campaign. There are a couple elements to it. One is you have to do, it's pretty much required now that you have to do some type of rebate campaign. There are a couple of ways to do rebate campaigns, but the basic concept is you get people to buy the product and then you rebate them for 100% of the purchase price of the product. Why would you do this? You're losing tons of money. You're basically giving away products for free, right? The reason is because Amazon's algorithm determines who ranks based on who gets the most sales volume for full price purchases. So if you're giving them discount codes to use on Amazon, Amazon doesn't even count that. Doesn't, doesn't count that at all. They count that as discounted sales, doesn't count towards the ranking. The purchasers have to buy it for full price. And that's why if you want to attract a lot of buyers to an unknown product, you have to give them a rebate for it. Some people will do 50% off, 75% off a rebates, 75% rebates. But the best way to do it in the first 35 days is just give 100% rebates. It's the best way to attract buyers. There are a couple of platforms for this. There's one that I'm actually co-founder of. It's called HPUC. And then there's the really popular one is called Rebate Key. But then the other way to do this is through a many chat funnel. So you can build a many chat funnel ManyChat is a Facebook chatbot uh, tool. Use a ManyChat funnel and you use Facebook ads, drive Facebook ads to the ManyChat funnel. The ManyChat funnel is targeting your audience on Facebook 
and you guys are going to love this being in the Shopify world. You already know the Facebook advertising world. You target your, your target audience on Facebook. You drive them to this many chat funnel that collects their information, their name, their email, their phone number. So you can contact them over time and you build an audience. And then what you're advertising is it's a free product. They're getting this product for free. There is a platform called EasyBot that makes this really easy. It's set up just for Amazon sellers. It, it has the whole flow pre-built for you. In the ad, they say they're going to get this product for free. They have to give you all their information. Then you direct them to Amazon to buy the product. And then you send them a gift card, either an Amazon gift card or a Visa gift card for the full price of the product. And then you can even follow up with them and ask them to leave a review if they want. You can't require them to leave a review. That's against Amazon's terms of service, but you can invite them to leave a review. And that's a great way to get your initial reviews as well. Reviews is one really important part of this launch. Getting reviews is one of the most popular topics in Amazon circles is how to get reviews and, and the art of getting reviews. You want to get at least 21 reviews within this period in order for you to be taken seriously by buyers. You need to get into the way into the double digits. There are a couple milestones when it comes to reviews. 21 is, is one big milestone. Getting past 100 is a big milestone. Getting past 500 is a really big milestone. And then passing 1,000 is a big milestone. Then for huge high volume sellers, passing 10,000 is a milestone. Rarely, but only a couple sellers will ever see. So you can get reviews via this many chat campaign. There's also now a feature in Amazon where you can click to get a review. Um, and what they do is they send a request to the buyer to leave a review for the product. There are tools that automate this, but you basically, you just go into your Amazon account and you click request review for every single order. And that will boost your review rate. There's another way to boost your review rate, which is putting an insert in the product with a QR code that leads to that very same many chat funnel that I just mentioned. Well, it would be a different many chat funnel, but the same type of flow, a different many chat funnel that offers them something and then asks them to, invites them to leave a review. And then the final element of a successful launch on Amazon is your Amazon PPC your Amazon advertising. The key here is you run unprofitable ads to those five keywords that you identified in the beginning, specifically for the purpose of ranking. So these are unprofitable. These are ads you're gonna pay, you're, you're gonna either break even or lose money on the ads. You have to expect that ahead of time. And you're doing it to run traffic to these search terms. And what Amazon's algorithm says is, if somebody searches this search term, and then they see this product and buy it, that means it was the most relevant product for that search term. Therefore, I should rank it higher because it's more interesting to buyers who search that term. So you have to juice that algorithm by making more people search for that term and then buy your product. And that's what these rebate platforms do and that's what PPC on, on Amazon does. People search the term and you're advertising unprofitably just for that term with a really high bid so that you always show up for that term and people click your product and then buy it. Once you have the rebates, the many chat and the PPC all going for the same five keywords and you have full price purchases coming in for all those keywords and you have reviews coming in, as long as you have a high converting listing, meaning a good product and good Amazon listing copy, you will rank for those keywords and you will have a successful Amazon launch. Wow, that was very, very comprehensive. So how much does it actually cost to, to rank a product? Most sellers consider their first order that they send into Amazon, they target breaking even on their first order. And the first order is going to be 500 units, 1,000 units, maybe 2,000 units, depending on the product. It's a win if you break even on your launch with that first order of inventory. After that, you know, it's... It's the idea is you've gotten the, the, that organic ranking to be able to profit uh, later on. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So it depends right, on the so... category, the actual budget. But honestly, it could be anything from two, three thousand at the the lowest, I would say, to twenty, thirty thousand um, at the highest. But again, you're going to try to break even on that. So you're spending that on the inventory to send into Amazon. And then your goal is going to be that through the sales and through the launch, you're going to break even. You may not, you may be lower. It's very doubtful that you'll be profitable on your first, your first uh, batch of inventory to Amazon. It's a very small, small subsection of sellers that actually do that. Even, you know, well-established sellers on Amazon. 
yeah, you target breaking even, but you may lose 10%, 15% of that initial order by going into the red. It's worth it because once you rank for these keywords, if you maintain a high conversion rate for the listings, you can stay ranked for those keywords for long periods of time. And if you ever start to drop ranking, you can increase it again by doing everything I just said. We just call it relaunching. You know, if you drop rank, then you relaunch by... Again, doing more aggressive PP, Amazon PPC, sending rebates through rebate platforms, doing a many chat funnel, doing a new launch to your existing list or the list that you built up through many chat. So there are a lot of ways to re-rank if you, if you lose ranking over time. Yeah, that's a really interesting strategy. And uh, okay, so we, how long does this process take you take? You mentioned again, 35 days, the honeymoon, that's how long it's, uh, that's, yeah. that's how fast we need to sell those first 500 to 1,000 units, right? Yep. The 35 day period, that's the honeymoon period that, you know, Amazon is paying really close attention and determining where your starting rank is going to be. And it really determines a lot about the, the way that your Amazon product will like unfold over the, the entire life of the product is happens in these first 35 days. That's the intense period, the honeymoon period. Then after that, there's another month where you have to do follow up to the launch. And during that period, you're going to be st- stop not doing the rebates anymore, or maybe just doing them only a little bit, you're going to still maintain fairly aggressive Amazon PPC, you might do a many chat funnel or part of a many chat funnel. And you'll continue doing the many chat funnel that's from the QR code and the insert in your product, the packaging insert. So you kind of follow up on it for that period. And then after that, you go into the maintenance phase, where you're just focused on continuously getting more reviews, maintaining your ranking, finding profitable keywords to advertise on on Amazon PPC, not not just unprofitable keywords that that are for the purpose of ranking. You'll find ones that are for the purpose of profit. And then you then at that point, your your game is really just to keep your performing products performing well. Yeah, so also, it sounds like it's very important to do this initial preparation and actually validation, whether your product can sell well on Amazon and whether you have enough keyword volume, right? Is there like a, is there like a, you know, quite simple formula to assess whether, uh, whether your product, you know, whether you're going to succeed before you put all this money into it? Is it? you know, just going to be based on keyword, Do you guys have like a specific checklist or like a specific keyword volume that you got to hit in order to be able to profit on this product? Yeah, so you don't want keyword volume less than 5000. If it's less than 5000, it's really not worth it 5000 searches per month, a good healthy search volume is like, you know, 10 to 40,000. If it's really if it's up to 80, 90, 100,000, I mean, search volume can go up to 200, 300, 400,000 even. But if it's above like 80, 90,000, that's going to be really high competition and you need a really big budget to try to rank for that. It's best to target somewhere in the range of 10,000 to 30,000 searches per month. And you can go down to 5,000, you can go down to 4,000. And it also depends on how many units you're trying to sell per day. You know, it's if you can sell, you know, 20 to 30 units per day on Amazon, you've got a pretty good product launch. There are tons of sellers doing 100 units, 200 units, 300 units per day, you know, and then a lot of the top level sellers that are high performing ASINs will be doing 70, 80 units a day, something like that. Yeah, as long as you know your profit per unit, you know your search volume, then uh, yeah, you're in a good position, good position to, to launch a successful product as long as the product really delivers on its promises. Awesome. Got it. Yes. It sounds like uh, this, this process actually sounds pretty straightforward. It, it almost is. sounds there's, too easy there's a to lot be of, true. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of elements to it. And that's why a lot of sellers are, frankly, just too lazy to run all of it. Because all of the elements I said, it takes all of them. You know, some sellers, like, they think, oh, my strength is advertising. So I'm just going to do an Amazon PPC launch. I'm not going to worry about rebates or many chat or any of that stuff. Or they'll say, many chats, that's too hard to learn. I have to take a course on it. I don't even want to get it. So it's really, it is straightforward, like you said, but it doesn't mean it's easy. There's a lot of components to it. A lot of research ahead of time, you know, getting the, the listing to be a high converting listing is a science in and of itself. And that's what Sophie, you know, specializes in the images, the enhanced brand content in the middle of the listing, the video, the keyword research, the copy. But yeah, if you do everything I said, you have a very high likelihood of, of having a successful Amazon launch. And I've seen thousands of them. 
In Judo Launch, I launched over 1,700 products. Sophie has done now over 1,000 listings. Yeah, and I see all of the sellers come through ASM, amazing.com. I'm really tight with Matt and Mike over there. And of course, Titan Network. So I see a lot of Amazon businesses. You know, I'm speaking from a position of data. I see what sellers succeed and what, what sellers don't. The ones that succeed run this launch formula that I just laid out for you to the T. And that's just the truth. Got it. Got it. Yeah, it sounds exciting. And actually, the last question that we had from uh, from uh, some of our community was, will Jeff Bezos steal my product if I start selling on Amazon? <laughs> yeah, that's a good, it's a good question. And it is a lot of, it, it's a big fear. The one sentence answer to that is, no, don't worry about it. The longer answer to it is, Amazon does use its third party platform as a validating data validating source for its own white label brands. It has Amazon basics. It's got a ton of brands. It's got like 80 something brands on Amazon or actually brands owned by Amazon, but it's not Amazon's main business. Only a tiny fraction of their revenue comes from their own brands, white labeling, and they don't want it to be a large portion. So Amazon's actually not, if you read their quarterly reports, if you read the vision of the company and everything they're investing into, it's not part of their, their big vision. They want to continue to grow the third-party seller network because it's the fastest way. It's the most efficient way for them to grow. They let all the animals fight it out in the jungle while they just take their fees. It's a good game for them. They only launch private label brands around basic, super high volume stuff. You know, there's a couple horror stories out there that you hear and they tend to get a lot of press but it's not a big issue. I can tell you from, you know, again, from being a mentor in, in one of the top Amazon seller masterminds, it's not something people are talking about. It's not a big issue for people. Amazon doesn't really, it doesn't want to be a retail company. It wants to be a tech company. It wants to be a platform. If Wall Street started to view Amazon as a retailer, they'd be screwed because retailers get like 3X multiples. Amazon has like a 500X multiple or something like that for its share price. So they would never want that to be a large portion of their business. They're not focused on it. I wouldn't worry about it. Epic. Yeah, you reassured me definitely. So is there anything else that um, I should have asked you, but I didn't? If let's say if, uh, if I was an Amazon or a Shopify seller trying to expand uh, onto Amazon? Yeah, I mean, again, I would say it's not for everybody. You have to do your homework up front. You can get taken to the cleaners. You know, people lose their shirts on Amazon. You got to be careful. You have to be savvy. And it's not something to do on the side. If you're going to do it, you have to commit resources to it, meaning your own time or your people's time or your team or and money, you know, new inventory purchases, new processes, all of that. And I would recommend, you know, joining some kind of group or mastermind or forum so that you can get the word on the street on what's working now because it's always changing. You know, that formula, launch formula that I laid out for you 18 months ago, it was completely different. Um, it's completely changed and it will change again in the next 18 months as well. It's a very fast paced environment. It's not for everybody. Do your homework ahead of time. If you follow the formula that I just laid out, you have a high degree of being successful as long as the market is there and you've done your research ahead of time. Make sure you have a high converting listing and make sure you have professional management of your, your Amazon ads because that's going to be 30 to 50% of your overall sales as well. But yeah, if you do all that, you have a good chance of succeeding on this platform. It's growing massively every single year. It's not slowing down. Awesome. Sounds good. So actually, like, let's stop talking about Amazon. Let's talk about uh, you briefly, Chris, as well. So, you know, you, you mentioned you were, uh, you were a scientist. And actually, I have a very similar story. So I'm curious, you know, what's your, what's your next steps going to be? Are you planning on, let's say, leveraging Sophie or any of the existing businesses towards some, some grander scheme of uh, things? I love that question, dude. I didn't even know we were going to get into that. Yeah, I, I fully do. I actually went through some of the top tech accelerators in the world, 500 startups in Silicon Valley with my company, Judo Launch. I've raised venture capital. I've raised over $5 million in venture capital. So I've been in the bootstrapped world of like bootstrap businesses, and I've been in the tech world of venture, venture back businesses. And now with uh, Thrasio, Thrasio is a company that buys Amazon businesses and bundles them together. There's big news last year that they became the fastest company in U.S. history to reach a $1 billion valuation uh, ever. And they're in the business of buying Amazon businesses and bundling them together. What we're doing with Sophie right now with other sellers is just the first step. 
Sophie is going to evolve into a platform for Amazon success for both our own brands and other brands. And in terms of my own vision for it, I actually, I see it as a tool to use in this, this ever-changing network. If you look at, for instance, like what Gary Vaynerchuk did, you know, he made the, his parents' wine business, then he learned how to advertise and he started his own digital marketing company, advertising for really big companies on Facebook. And now he's using it basically as like a tool for his own private equity interests, buying companies and then boosting them through running traffic and changing their whole identity. What I'm doing with Sophie is basically that. We will have the apparatus for making listings and making companies succeed on Amazon. And we do, we have the data to back it. Right now, we're still offering that to other sellers and that's our main business. That's going to be ramped down over time. And soon we'll be using that for our own brands and for equity positions in other brands. And I plan on doing some type of private equity play in, in this industry, gathering Sophie together with other businesses, either acquiring them or merging, doing a play that is much, much bigger than the seven figure businesses that we see floating around this industry. There are a lot of options for liquidity for these brands that we can enable them to achieve through interesting financial frameworks. So I want to merge the, the spheres of this bootstrapped, you know, make money online type of world and this like venture capital and, and finance and Wall Street world and really allow brands to get capital from Wall, from Wall Street, which is getting more and more interested in this space and allow Wall Street to get access to this really growing asset network. So I plan on being a really big part of that and a player in that whole consolidation and as it happens, and it's going to unfold over the next 10 years, I'll be here the entire road, the entire way. And this is just day one for me. Amazing. I, I think that that's, uh, that's, that, that makes perfect sense, you know, especially like with Trazio as a success story, the investors, the VC are going to be looking very favorably and at companies following their footsteps, right? Exactly. Yep. So uh, give me one book recommendation. What's the best book that you've recently read? So recently, I mean, I have my all time favorite books, like I, I love the corny ones, Think and Grow Rich is one of my favorite old books. I love the Lean Startup, Four Hour Work Week was one of the books that set me off on this journey, you know, when I was a kid, I actually read a book that was, uh, I read it almost as a joke. And then it turned out to have a lot of great advice, great business advice, even though it's from a person that I don't have respect for. So this is a this is a weird setup, I know. But I read Donald Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. It's, a, it's an old book. I'm not a fan of the guy at all. Don't like his style. But his experiences in the cutthroat world of real estate in New York City are really telling and really captivating. I thought it was really cool. And it showed you know, how one of the most cutthroat industries works and some really like, interesting stories that like, tell you, teach you lessons about uh about business yeah so i'd say that oh let me just say one though i know you said one book i've said like five one of my favorite <laughs> books of all time is a book called titan and it's the it's 20 hours so it's a big commitment but it is totally life-changing it's the book of one of the first like epic post-industrial revolution billionaires and that's john d rockefeller of standard oil dude it's an epic story and it's an epic book and it teaches you so many things. I learned through stories. It's really hard for me to learn from like a how-to manual. I just get so bored. I have a hard time paying attention. I'm very ADD. But if I hear a story, the lessons from that story get baked into me. And that book, man, I learned so much from it. It was great. Awesome. Thanks for those recommendations. So if people want to find out more about you or uh, any of your companies, how can they uh, reach out? Yeah, best way is just email us. Hello at sophiesociety.com. That's hello at S-O-P-H-I-E-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y.com. Hello at sophiesociety.com. And that's the best way. Just shoot an email over. Just say, I heard you heard the podcast, you know, want to learn more or have this or that question or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'll get back to you or someone or my assistant at least will. <laughs> and, Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Awesome, Chris. Thanks a lot for all those insights. I think that Amazon, it's a huge, huge world and we need to, you know, learn how to bridge the gap between Shopify and, and Amazon. There's a lot to be learned there. 
especially if a product is a good fit. I think it could be quite a, quite a great e-commerce scaling strategy, in fact. So thanks a lot for your time and have a great day. Thanks, Matt. It was awesome. Thanks a lot for staying till the very end. This was e-commerce scaling strategies by Sales Genomics brought to you by Matt from Sales Genomics. If you're interested in more tips and strategies on how to scale your e-commerce business, visit our Facebook group called e-commerce scaling strategies by Sales Genomics or follow us on social media.